What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and I've been waiting for this one for a while. Today I'm gonna to show you a smartphone that tries to outdo the competitors by doing something completely different, something that nobody really asked for, but at the same time is kind of cool, a display on the back. So let's take a look at the Maizu 7 Pro today, and uh, is it better with two displays? Does two displays really change the user experience so much that you'd wanna to switch to this phone? And actually it has a couple other advantages to other smartphones that I'm gonna talk about, but let's go ahead and take a look at one of the most unique offerings in the smartphone world right now. All right, so here we go. Now this isn't an entirely new concept, but it is new in the execution. So most of the smartphones that have ever tried to do something like this have had an electronic ink display on the back of the phone. This one actually has a full LCD, a little tiny one. And uh, here we are, very nice box, something a little unique, is that plastic? Nope, it's really hard uh, cardboard. Very, oh no, that is plastic. Very unique opening. So uh, there it is, nice experience. Apple said the experience always makes the first impression. So wow, very unique. And this is like the first uh, smartphone box I've opened where you slide the phone out like a cassette tape over here. All right, so Maizu Pro 7 here. It's a very slim phone, reminds me a lot of the OnePlus 5 from the back. And there it is. So logo down here. I like that they did something different. The dual lens looks a lot different from the standard uh, devices that try to copy Apple. And I've actually made a video about that already. And here's a little tiny display. So uh, about two inches there. And uh, over here, let's go ahead and power it on and see what it has going for it. So volume on top over here, very interesting orientation, beveled in there, Maizu. Uh, very, very similar to the OnePlus 5 on the exterior. And this right now goes for about $450, 470 So let's see if the price is justified here. Anyways, uh, pretty standard stuff I'm guessing in there. Oh, and that's so cute. It's got its own little boot up logo as well. All right, so here it is. Now, nothing too special. Where most smartphones begin to focus on the front facing display, they make it larger, they make it prettier. This one still has a pretty decent one, but they decided to focus elsewhere on the back. So uh, basically you have it sitting down here. You've got the time. You can, uh, is it touch screen? Yeah, it is, cool. So you got a step counter, so you can quickly get an idea there. But why not just put that on the front facing display on an always on display? I mean, what is the point? Already after using this thing for only a couple seconds, it's immediately apparent. Uh, one of the biggest flaws about it is that it doesn't have any touch back controls here, meaning you always have to go back up here to go backwards. And there's no swipe like on the iPhone. So that's already annoying to me. And I've only been using this thing for what, two minutes now? All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at that secondary display here. Now you can enable double tap to wake, which is a neat little feature instead of just the gesture based one, but it's a very sharp display in here surprised, um, looks pretty dang good. It's very sleek, that's what this was very surprising about is they managed to fit two displays in and still keep the device so thin. So here's a demo, let's see what it can do. The weather, and then swipe up for a selfie, okay, cool. Let's go ahead and try that. So swipe, swipe, no data for the weather, swipe up for the camera mode, ooh, cool. Well, that's, that's surprisingly very good, so We've got a blur effect, beauty effect. Wow, so that's a pretty cool viewfinder there. Very nice. So um, that's probably gonna be the most advantageous thing about it. Obviously setting it down and having the time there, whether there's pretty cool, but what's the difference from the regular mode if you have an always on display? This mode though, that is pretty dang cool. I'm, I'm liking this. I would love to have that on an iPhone. All right, so we got the weather in. Let's see how that looks back here. Oh, I'm still on the camera. So steps, still no data. All right, well, it's not really giving me anything else to look at here. I don't know why it's not refreshing, but that should be there. So as I continue to use this thing, it's really struck me how amazing Android phones have gotten even in the mid tier section in the last few years. This thing is very refined. This is running a custom OS uh, skin, but it still feels very, very fluid. I love that feeling. Like the feeling you get when you hold an iPhone, something so solid, this has it definitely. I wanna see what this ships with, Android 7.0, which is acceptable nowadays. The display is very sharp, very crisp. I like the colors. 
I'm, I'm liking it. I'm very impressed here. The build quality is seriously top notch. This thing all around has this feeling being very solid. So when you get a notification, this is what it's gonna look like right there. That was actually a Snapchat, not a message. But if you tap on the display, it'll show you you have a notification right there. Now you can't open it, I don't think. Nope, just goes to the camera but you can slide over and check out the weather that's not working. Now, interestingly enough, they did copy Apple on one thing and that's the app switcher. So I think this is gonna be the gesture for the iPhone 8, a swipe up from the bottom to get into the app switcher, but they did reverse it over here, very creative, and you swipe up to kill it. Now you do have a clear all button too, which is really cool, wish the iPhone had something like that. Uh, but there is that. Now, another really unique thing about this is that it's using a MediaTek X30 processor. It's an incredibly powerful processor, but it's not very well known. It's a cheaper alternative to the Snapdragon series, but let's see how powerful it is because on paper, this thing is a DECA core processor, 10 cores. How ridiculous is that? So let's go ahead and get some performance numbers here. This has two 2.6 gigahertz processors, four 2.2 and four 1.9. This supposedly is a massive increase over any or sort of existing processors from these guys. It does have four gigabytes of RAM, this model here. Not sure why that one says 1.7. Well, that was a nice surprise. Apparently I bought this thing and this guy sent me the inferior model with the slower processor that's uh, more of a base model. So I guess we'll still get a uh, actual benchmark off of this, but I was really looking forward to seeing the X30 and how it would compare. Man. That is a bummer. So uh, it's stupid that you get these different classes and performances, but I guess to make it cheaper or to rip off eBay unsuspecting uh, users or customers like me. Wow, that is truly terrible. Next to an iPhone 7, 869 single core score and 3961 multi, which isn't half bad. But uh, yeah, I feel a little swindled here paid for something and didn't get it. Anyways, last thing I wanted to cover was the dual 12 megapixel camera, as well as the fingerprint sensor and see how they compare to the iPhone. All right, so with the screen off, one, two, three. Oh, wow, that's actually very surprisingly fast here. Has no animation at all. So one, two, three, all right, one, two, three. Wow, that is at least twice as fast as the iPhone 7. Well, when it registers here, one, two, three. There we go. So with the screen on, let's see that on both. One, two, three. Even better there. Wow, I'm very impressed. That's an extremely fast fingerprint sensor due to the lack of animation. One thing that's really gonna get annoying, you wanna press the power button, you slide all of them down, you take a screenshot. That's super annoying. Uh, there's a couple of annoyances about this thing that they should fix with software, but otherwise, very solid hardware. Let's check out that dual 12 megapixel camera on the rear. All right, synchronize. So I just realized this thing can't do 4K. It only has 1080p, 30 frames per second, not even 60, which is super lame. No optical image stabilization, which means those 12 megapixels when in motion go to waste for the most part. Color reproduction seems to be pretty good. It's definitely solid. Uh, it's, it's not a bad camera when you're standing still. It's got the vibrance, it's got some clarity to it. Very good shutter balance and control here. I like it. The iPhones is just much crisper with 4K, of course. It's for a budget mid-tier smartphone. Very, very solid here on the camera. Just lacking in features completely in that department. For a 12 megapixel, I'd expect a little bit more with the dual sensor. But uh, there it is, guys. Quality is pretty decent. And for all the hype behind the secondary display, I wanted to see how does it actually work? Does it help you take better selfies? So I took a few and uh, let's take a look here in some closer detail. Whoa, it looks like my face is floating in a sea of blur. Unnecessarily uh, amount of blur there. It looks like a bad Photoshop Facebook picture you'd post. Um, this is, I think, a beauty filter here. Didn't really work for me there. This is normal. I mean, it's all right, but what is the difference? How is it different from opening up my camera, flipping around the camera here, and taking a picture here? There is literally almost no benefit. Here you get a way bigger screen, more detail to actually see what's going on versus this little tiny one here. 
a gimmick more than anything for sure like this is just something you do not need in your life as cool as it is for the first few minutes of using it you immediately start to use the original camera with the original camera up here to take pictures of course these are a little bit high resolution so you get some more quality with them but the viewfinder is much better on the original screen i just think it's a totally pointless feature all right guys so there it is the Maizu pro 7 a gimmicky phone with a nice little display doesn't really add much to the table. And for what it is for the price tag, I expected a lot more from it from the $475 price tag. So definitely uh, I would I would much rather go for a OnePlus 5 than this guy at this price point. This is not worth the extra price bump. But there we go, guys. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Something a little bit different.